Yeah, I think so. Cool. Thanks. Showing up in the displays or whatever. It's showing up tab bar. No. Which I need to just extend the display. seem to want to uh, connect here. Uh, I can always just do the top without the slides, I suppose. Is anybody here smarter about these uh, dis display connector things than either of us? Got a yeah, I heard that also. This, is, this looks like a new Mac, right? Yeah, it is a new Mac, yeah. It's HDMI. It's HDMI. Okay. okay, thanks. thanks. <coughs> Just die on me. Is this so slow? <coughs> okay. Hooray. Okay, I think you go back. Okay, well, we'll go with that then. Uh, hi, I'm Rory. Um, I work at Invenia. There's a big group of us here. Um, we are also a group of people who put Julie in production. Uh, that's why I talk about kind of boring things like file paths, not necessarily the fancy machine learning stuff that everyone else knows about. Um, I'm changing the subtitle of this talk because uh, I thought the first one was a bit too opinionated. Really, it's the beginning of the week, so if people have opinions on this stuff, feel free to come talk to me. Um, yeah. So going right into it, uh, why do we care about file paths? Um, well, they're pretty ubiquitous. Uh, we're constantly dealing with file paths in our personal lives, and when it comes to research and experimentation, 
you know, whether we like it or not, we have to grab data from files and we have to shove our data in file somewhere else to do analysis later on. Um, might as well try and make that nice and uh, easy to do. Um, another reason we care about this kind of stuff is uh, file paths aren't very consistent. This is just three examples, but if you look at like the wiki page, there's like 20 different ways to represent even local file paths, not counting remote file, file systems. Uh, this should be easy, but it isn't. Uh, most people write code where they, they handle each case, like writing to an FTP server, writing to an S3 object. Um, it should be easier than that. We have the same concept of having a hierarchy of, of files that we want to interact with and we organize them the same way. Uh, we should have kind of a similar API for interacting with that. So what are our current options? I'm gonna list two of the main ones. There are others. Um, so the thing we currently do, <laughs> okay. Uh, so there's strings. Uh, this is what OS's, uh, our Python's OS path does. It's what Haskell's default library does as well, and that's what we're doing in Julia. Um, so, sorry, to clarify on this, this is basically just uh, writing a string interface to basically system calls that you're doing to your OS, um, and there's not really a lot else on top of that apart from trying to provide the same API for those string calls regardless of what OS you're on, whether it's Windows or Unix. The other option would be path type. So if people who've used Python have used pathlib, uh, basically it's a way of encapsulating uh, properties about paths that are different from strings. Um, and it provides a common API for interacting with those types um, and tries to prevent you from doing things that are kind of bad by pretending that a path is a string. Uh, so other examples of this are Rust standard library does that as well. Uh, C++ has this as well. Uh, that was supposed to be deleted. Um, so jumping right into it, filepath.jl. There's basically two main libraries here. There's filepathspace.jl, which basically is there's no dependencies, and in theory, if we like the features from it, we could choose to incorporate that into base. Uh, and then there's filepath.jl, which is kind of a, a package that incorporates other features from other packages uh, and provides kind of a compatibility layer to make things easier to use. So here's an example of a path type in Julia. Hopefully it's not that hard to read. Um, uh, so basically we have a path type up there. I'm calling a function called current working directory. It's the same as present working directory in base Julia. It's that it returns a path type rather than a string. Uh, things like read path work the same as read dir, uh, returning path types. Uh, there's also a stat function which similar, looks similar to uh, um, the base function. Uh, there's some nice properties in there, like there's a mode type which presents itself like a normal uh, Linux string rather than just like, here's a number that you're supposed to expect to parse. Um, also, the times are represented as date times rather than just Unix or seconds since the epoch. Um, the other thing in here, which might be hard to see, there's a division operator for joining rather than calling join path in case you ever accidentally called join when you meant to call join path. Um, so you can also do the same operations with an S3 path, and so you can read uh, a prefix in a bucket and return paths to, that, the, to those objects. Uh, you can look at the last modified time, uh, the size of the object. You can read and write in the same way you normally would to any other file system. Uh, at the bottom there, there's a link. Uh, basically, we've been doing this internally at our company for a year or two now. Uh, it was suggested that I open source this, so there's currently a work in progress PR for AWS S3.jl to add this type. Uh, so one of the benefits we get with all this is that we get a bunch of default behavior for paths, the path abstraction, so we can get the file name, the base name, uh, parents of a type, we can navigate through the tree, we can also copy and move objects from one part of the tree to another part of the tree, uh, and you really just have to implement a subset of the functionality for your particular path type. Uh, so generalizability, uh, this is kind of a common example for us to work through, sorry. Uh, uh, so we're looping over hours, we're basically trying to uh, work on some model or whatever. I've extracted away, there's comments for the actual model part because right now we care about the boring stuff, which is file stuff. Um, and so basically we're uh, getting some features, we're saving the features for later analysis, we're running a model, getting the results of that, saving that as well. And then at the bottom we're doing this JLSO save uh, it could be some other format as well. It works the same way. Um, and so right now you might be asking, oh, well, you're just, you know, it looks the same way as if you were do doing this with strings. The difference is that we're passing in abstract path types, so this would work with any type of uh, path. Uh, 
equality, uh, so paths, uh, strings uh, that are not equal might be equal in the file system, so you might have a relative path to the same object in the file system. Those should be considered double equals even if they're not is equals. In the case of just treating them as strings, they wouldn't be equal. Uh, those also might differ depending on the path type, so in a S3 path, having a trailing slash is important to whether or not it's a directory or an object. Uh, join uh, is kind of obvious if people have ever called join when they meant to call join path. Um, Having a division operator for that is also kind of nice to separate the two concepts. Uh, and being able to dispatch on path types is kind of nice for various reasons. Uh, so paths versus strings, where do you go from here? Uh, so better integrations in file paths.jl. Uh, this is integrating with file IO and glob and URI parser that people want. Uh, another thing that's in there is a compat macro. Again, hard to read, I'm sorry folks. Uh, basically you can wrap your function that takes, oh, time up I guess. Okay, uh, I'm almost done. Uh, so basically if you write a uh, function that takes in an abstract path type, if you provide this macro, it'll rewrite a uh, version of the function, so you'll have two methods rather than one. One will take strings and convert them to paths for you. Uh, and then in a second example here with my join, uh, you're specifying a return type on that. And so if you specify a return type that's a path, it'll then convert the returning path to a string for you. So you can interact with APIs that expect strings rather than paths. Uh, and the final option could be we could start merging properties of file path base with base file system. Um, and this is just to kind of get more people adopting the pattern if it makes sense um, without depending on a third party package. Uh, thank you for your patience and sorry for the technical difficulties. Thanks, Rory. Is there like one question? Okay, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, would you compare this? Uh, to like which other file path pri uh, libraries from other languages would you compare this to? Uh, so I would compare this to uh, mostly pathlib from Python but also a lot of uh, Rust as well. Those are the two main ones that I'm aware of. Um, when I looked at a couple of others like the C++ library, I haven't used it but it looked like they were doing a similar kind of thing to what we're trying to do here, so. All right, thanks. Thanks.